Suspense. Tonight, Autolite brings you Love, Honor, or Murder, a suspense play produced and edited by William Spear and starring Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Hello, Alice. Yeah, this is Helen. Look, kid, I'm not going to be able to go to the dance after all. Well, Harry works the late shift with that taxi of his, so I've got to stay home and look at the four walls again. Oh, I'm so fed up, sometimes I feel like leaving this house and Harry and the whole works. Believe me, the only reason I haven't is because I need the money to do it. Seven years of wedded bliss. Only thing to show for it is this stinking place. If I ever get my hands on a thousand bucks, I'd get out of here so fast that it'd make it... I said if I had a thousand bucks, I'd kiss off Harry so fast that it'd make it... Hold it a minute, Alice. Somebody came in. Hold it. Is that you, Harry? Yeah, it's me. Came home early. Well, if you expect to find dinner at this hour, you're going to be disappointed. It's Harry, Alice. Honey? What was I saying? Oh, yeah. The same old Honey, cut thing. the conversation. Said... Something's happened. What? I said cut the conversation. Here, give me that phone. Well, the phone... Alice, is... Helen will call you later. Goodbye. Big man. Baby, you know what I got here? $12,000. Yes, in a moment, Kathy and Elliot Lewis, and a tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. And now, with love, honor, or murder, and the performances of Kathy and Elliot Lewis, Autolite hopes once again to keep you in... Suspense. That's what I said, baby. $12,000. Are you out of your mind, Harry? Helen, I found this wallet in my cab just a few minutes ago. Wallet? Here, look inside. Open it up. Harry. Hundred dollar bill. And fifties and twenties and tens. More than twelve thousand dollars. Twelve thousand dollars. <laughs> now is it all right to come home early? Why, oh, gee, I I don't know what to say. Nah, take it easy, baby. Don't get too excited. I gotta give it back. Give it back? Well, yeah. Look at the name inside the wallet. Well, Belongs you... to a regular customer of mine, Sidney Walker, the news commentator. I take him around town every afternoon. He calls up for me personally. Twelve thousand dollars. Yeah. But as far as we're concerned, it's not worth twelve cents, huh? If I don't turn it into the company before Walker calls about it, they can throw me in a pen for five years. Then why did you bring it home? Oh, I don't know. I guess I shouldn't have at that. It's just that I never saw so much money before. I wasn't so far away. And I I just had to bring it home and show it to you. You had to bring it home and wave it under my nose. That's like you. Oh, no, Helen. That's just like you, Harry. No, give me the money, Helen. Walker's going to remember leaving the money in my cab. He'll call up the company. Wait a second. How long ago did you find the money? Twenty minutes ago. I came straight home. Well, what's the hurry? What? Well, as long as you're home, why don't you wash up? I'll fix you some supper. I'll make you a good supper. Well, I don't know. I ought to get back. Go on, honey. Go on. Wash up. Go ahead. Give us a chance for a little while to kind of pretend the money belongs to us. Ah, this coffee really hits the spot. Why didn't you eat, honey? Hmm? Oh, I was thinking. About the 12,000 bucks? Well, someday we'll have it too, baby. We've got it right now, Harry. Well, well yeah, for about five more minutes. Well, I guess I'd better report in now. It's been almost an hour. Walker will be calling the company pretty soon. I want the money to be in the safe when he does. Uh, you give me the wallet, Helen? Huh? How do you know Walker will call the company? Oh, we've been through all of that. He'll call because he'll remember the ride with me. We went over a bumpy stretch. Easy for his wallet to pop out then. He'll probably remember that. He could have lost it in so many other places. He may not even think of the cab ride. And if he doesn't, won't you feel like a fool? Well, it's better than cooling my heels in some jail. I know what I'd do if I were you. What? I'd take the chance that Walker wouldn't remember that he wouldn't call. I'd keep the money. Oh, Helen, stop that. That's what I'd do, but not you. You've always been afraid to take a chance. You'll always be content to be nothing. I'm sorry I ever came here with the money. 
Now, give it back to me. I'm turning it into the company. You love me, Harry. Well, that's got nothing to do with it. No, it it has everything to do with it. If you leave this house with the money, when you come back, I'll be gone. Now you're talking like a sap. I mean it. Come on, give me the wallet. Here it is, Harry. When you come back, I'll be gone. Yeah, I'll bet you will. Well, I gotta be going. I'll see you later, honey. I'll be home later. Doesn't matter when you come home. You won't find me here. Ah. Uh, you stop talking like that. So long, Helen. It's really goodbye, Harry. I mean it. You. You. The first day we were married, you've been twisting me around your little finger. Only because you know how much I love you, how much I need you. I guess you'll never stop doing that, will you, Helen? Well? What do you want me to do? Nothing. Nothing. Leave everything to me. This is Mr. Sidney Walker's personal secretary calling. Don't tell me that cab Mr. Walker ordered hasn't got there yet. I sent it out hours ago. Oh, oh, no, it got here all right. It's not that. I, uh, we we're trying to locate Mr. Walker, and I just wondered if by any chance you might have heard from him. What? Well, no, if he got his cab all right, why should he have called us? Oh, of course you're right. Well, thank you very much. Well? He hasn't reported anything yet. That don't make sense. Twelve thousand bucks is a lot of money, even for Walker. Give me the phone book. Who are you going to call now? Mr. Walker, of course. We've got to find out why he hasn't reported losing his wallet. What? Huh? Oh, look. Why don't you let me bring the money back? Maybe... Hey, maybe he'll give me a good reward. He might even You're give me not a... going to do anything. You're going to get us in trouble, Helen. I know what I'm doing. Hello? H- Hello? I'd like to speak to Mr. Walker, please. Well, he's not in right now. This is Mr. Walker's housekeeper. Could I take a message? Uh, no, no, this is a personal matter. Where could I be certain of reaching him? Nowhere until 10 o'clock. 10 o'clock? Yes, that's when he does his nightly broadcast, you know. Oh, yes, of course, and... and uh, uh, what time does he reach the station? Five minutes of ten. Uh-huh. You're quite sure he'll be there then? Oh, my heavens. You could stake your life on it. That's been his schedule for a good many years. Uh, who's this talking? Are you a friend of Mr. Walker? Oh, yes, yes. My husband and I have known Sidney for a long time. Well, as long as you're a friend, I can tell you. Mr. Walker has a busy evening ahead of him. Oh? He lost his wallet an hour or so ago. It contained a lot of money, enough for a payment on a house he's wanted. That's too bad. I do hope he finds it. Oh, he'll find the wallet, all right. He's out looking for it right now. Do you have any idea where he might have lost it? Oh, yes, he certainly has, and he's mighty disappointed it hasn't been returned. He knows who found the wallet? Well, not exactly. The way he told it to me, he knows who should have found it. But that is, he didn't tell me the rascal's name. I see. He's too kind and he's going. That's what he is. Uh, he's always been that way. I'd have called the police right away. Why hasn't he? Oh, he doesn't want to cause any embarrassment or hard feelings, you know. So first he's going to look everywhere else he's been this evening. Mm. And if it still doesn't turn up? Well, he says that this fellow he suspects hasn't come by the apartment to return the money by the time he gets home. Then he'll report it all right. And, <laughs> oh, but my gracious. Here I am, gabbing away a mile a minute. I'm sure all this doesn't interest you. Oh, it does. Of course it does. And now, if we want to reach Sydney before he gets home, you say he will arrive at the radio station just before 10. At 5 minutes to 10, on the dot. Well, then we'll contact him there. Thank you. Harry. Yes? Yeah. That was his housekeeper. By what she said, he knows he left the wallet in your cab. See, I told you. Yeah, but he hasn't reported it yet. Mr. Walker is a very fair man. Oh. Well, I'll have time to bring it down to the company. Harry, then. how many times do I have to tell you we're not going to bring it down to the company? 
Now, come on. We've got to decide what we can do between now and midnight to keep Walker from reporting his loss. There's nothing we can do. You just said he knows he left the money in my cab. That's right. Well, then what is there to decide? Smiling about. Was I smiling? Thinking of something. Of what? You know, there is really only one way in all the world to keep Walker from telling about that wallet. What are you talking about? The only way to keep Walker from telling would be to kill him. Now, now, look. We've got to decide what we're going to do, so let's stop the jokes. Do I look like I'm joking? No. No, you don't. Is that gun in the dresser drawer. It's never been used. They can never trace anything to you. Oh, Helen, what are you talking about? You've got to kill him. It's simple arithmetic. But how can I? He's... He's never done me any harm. If he lives, he'll call the police and tell him you've stolen his money. Well, that's why i got to return the money. If you do that, you'll lose your wife. No, no but Helen, look... Listen to me. Look how simple it is. At five minutes to ten, you can be absolutely certain that he'll be entering the broadcasting studio. If you were waiting outside for him, the... there are so many quiet places you could take him with a gun. Yeah, but Helen, l- listen to me, even... Even if, if I wanted to kill him, I, I couldn't. I have no nerve. Oh, yes, you have. What? You see, Harry, there are some men who can kill a hundred times. It doesn't bother their appetite. They still get a good night's sleep. Yeah, but not... not no, me. I know, no, not you. Not you, Harry. But every man, even a weakling like you, can kill once. He's got to kill to get rid of the thing that'll destroy him. Oh, Helen, please, I can't. You can. Harry, you can do it for me. Why don't you let me just bring the money back? It'd be so much better that way. Harry. What time is it? What? What time is it? Uh, It's ten after nine. You couldn't bring the money back now even if I let you. But why? What time should you have reported in with your cab? Half past eight. What the... Oh. So that's it. See what I mean? If Walker reports his loss now, you're in trouble no matter what you do. They'll know you were thinking of keeping the money. In their eyes, that's almost as bad as really keeping it. Yeah, but I... You know the rules of that company. You're supposed to inspect your cab after every fare. If they don't arrest you, they'll fire you. They'll blackball you. You'll never get another job. That's why you kept me here. Made supper for me. Stalled around. You figured that one out, too, didn't you, Helen? Yes, I figured that one out, too. Walker will get to the station at 5 to 10. You've got 45 minutes. Start out and act as if you're on a regular run. That'll be your alibi later. Just stop at all the usual places and talk to the boys and act as if it were just another night. What what about my schedule? I'm supposed to be in at 8.30. You can always tell them that business was so good you couldn't come in. Shall I get the gun, Harry? Yes. Autolite is bringing you Kathy and Elliot Lewis in Love, Honor, or Murder. Tonight's production in radio's outstanding theater of thrills, Suspense. Is it you? Uh, beg pardon? Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was my husband. What do you want? Well, you must be Mrs. Blake, Harry's wife. Huh? Yeah, what do you want? Say, uh, have I talked to you on the phone before? Why? Your voice sounds kind of familiar. You may have. Who is this? This is Dave Harris over at Peerless Cab Company. Peerless Cab Company? Yeah. Say, uh, have you seen Harry in the last couple hours? I know. He's out working. Well, you should have been through with his shift at 8.30. 25 to 10 already. That's not like Harry. 25 to 10. Is this something wrong? Well, I don't know. One of Harry's regular customers, Sidney Walker, called up a few minutes ago from a restaurant on the way to that broadcast is. Yeah? He thinks he left a wallet in Harry's cab. I said he thinks he left... I heard it. you. 
Well, there was $12,000 in a wallet, Mrs. Blake. Walker says he looked everywhere else that he might have lost it and it hadn't turned up. He just wants me to contact Harry as soon as possible and tell him to look in the back of his cab. Well, if Harry should call, I'll tell him to get in touch with you right away. I should... What did you say before? Huh? Walker called and told all this before he started for the station. Uh, what, what are you talking about, Mrs. Blake? Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> Walker called before he reached the station. Harry will be waiting at the station to kill him. But now Walker's already told him that maybe Harry took the wallet. Everything will point to Harry. They'll arrest him ten minutes after he's killed Walker. Harry will tell him everything. He's weak. He'll try to blame me. He'll tell him I made him do it. i got to call him back. i got to stop him before he kills Walker. Twenty-five to ten. Twenty minutes to reach him. I got to reach him. Twenty minutes to reach Harry. Twenty minutes to call him back. I told Harry to make all the regular stops so everybody remember him. Oh, let me think. He'll stop for gas at the taxi garage. Yeah, yeah, I reached him there before. The number's written down someplace. There's that little book. I'm shaking so I can't. Here, here it is. Mutual six five. I do. Five. Five. Phyllis Garage, Max speaking. This, this is Mrs. Blake calling. Harry Blake's wife? Yeah, Miss Blake. Has Harry been there yet? To get his gas, I mean. No, he hasn't been here all night. Say, what's he been up to? What do you mean? Well, I just got a call from the main office to hold him here when he does show up. Look, Mac, Harry always told me you were his friend. Well, sure. Well, he's in uh, trouble, terrible trouble. I haven't got the time to explain, but if I don't reach him right away, I don't know what'll happen. Well, uh, I don't know what I can do, Miss Blake. Well, you you can tell me the names and the telephone numbers of some of the places that cabbies like Harry stop off at well, he, while, while they're on their runs. Uh, well, sometimes the boys stop at Gus's Coffee Shop on 6th Avenue for coffee. What's their number? Uh, wait a minute, it's, uh... It's a state uh, 8570. Yeah, state 8570. Eight, all right, all right. Where else? Oh, maybe if he had a few minutes to spare, he'd go into Frank Stavon on Washington Boulevard. I don't know the phone number there. I'll look it up. I'll look it up. Where else? Uh, of course, he might go up to Union Headquarters to chew the rank with the boys. Union Headquarters. Yeah, where else? Well, look, there's lots of places he might stop off at. you got to reach him by 10 o'clock, huh? Well, that doesn't leave you much time. No, it doesn't leave me much time. <laughs> I'm trying to locate Harry Blake. Has he been there tonight? He hasn't. Well, if he does show up, will you tell him to call his wife? Tell him it's very important. You're sure Harry isn't in? Could you just kind of look around again? It, it, all right, if you're sure. But, but listen, if he does drop in, tell him to call home right away. Harry Blake. Yeah, the cab driver. He was in your place just a few minutes ago. Can you call him back? Please, it's terribly important. I know you're awful busy and everything. Hello? 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 What am I going to do? What am I going to do? i got to stop him. How? Fifteen minutes to ten. Ten minutes. Only ten minutes. i got to think. i got to think. Radio station's on 6th and Main. That's two miles away. Maybe I could get to Harry before Walker reaches there. I've got to try. I've got to try. I've got to stop him. Driver. Huh? When I got in your cab, you told me you could get me to the radio station in ten minutes. I didn't give you no guarantees, lady. I'm doing the best I can. But... I've got to get there before five or ten. You told me you could make... It don't do no good to holler in my ear, lady. There must be some way to make better time. Can't you take side streets or something? Again, you're stuck. It's the traffic, lady. But you told me... I know what I told you, but I didn't figure on so much traffic. <laughs> Please hurry. Yeah, yeah. I'll pay you anything if you get me there. Oh, hey. Always hurry. 
Now what's wrong? I told you, lady, the traffic is lousing us up. What time is it now? Oh, about ten minutes to ten. Don't tell me about. I want the exact time. Exact time, uh, seven minutes to ten. Seven minutes to ten? How much farther is it to the station? Well, I can tell you this. We're not going to make it in two minutes. And there's no need to make it at all. Take me home. Just a minute or two before ten. He'll be coming home soon. Wanting to hide under the bed, whimpering like a dog. They'll trace the killing to him fast enough. They'll come here. They'll take us both away. And the money, too. The money, too. Wait a minute. Why should they come here? Why should they get the money? Why do I have to take the blame for what he did? I didn't commit the murder. That money, I could get away. They would look for me too hard. Yeah. Yeah, why should I take the blame for what Harry did? Police Department, Sergeant Graham speaking. I want to report a murder. What's that? You're too late to stop the murder, but you can still catch the killer. Wait a second. Now, just who is this killer? His name is Harry Blake. Drives a taxi cab. Taxi number is 365. You should find him somewhere around the radio station. Uh, just who did he kill? He killed Harry. Evening, Helen. Go on, finish your conversation. How did you get back here so soon? Good cabbie can make time when he has to. You killed him? It's just after ten o'clock. Turn on the radio and find out. Oh, you're talking on the phone. I'll turn the radio on for you. Harry, the police will come here and look for you. They'll catch you, Harry. Did anybody see you do it? Did they try to... Yeah. analysis of foreign affairs, Mr. Sidney Walker. <sighs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This is Sidney Walker. Tonight, I'm going to bring you a report on a recent interview I had with one of the oh, most prominent oh, industrialists in America. Oh, that's all I want to hear. I tell you his name. <laughs> you didn't kill him at all. I should have known. I should have known I actually thought you went through with it. <laughs> you didn't have the nerve. No. I didn't kill him. But I did have the nerve. What? Yeah. You gave me the nerve. That pep talk before I left, it was very true, you know. What are you talking about? Do you remember? Even a weakling like me can kill once if he's got a kill to get rid of the one thing that'll destroy him. Those were your very words. Then why didn't you kill Walker? Because I got to thinking about what you said and how right you were. And the more I thought about it, the more I realized. Realized what? that I was headed in the wrong direction. What do you mean by that? Put that gun away, Harry. In order to rid myself of the one thing in the world that can destroy me, I had to come back here to you. Helen. Hello. Hello, what happened there? Hello. Hello. This is the police department, isn't it? I heard her speaking to you as I was opening the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure, it's the police department. What's going on there? What were those shots? Wasn't my wife reporting a murder? Yeah, she was. She gave us all the information, except she didn't tell us who was going to be killed. Oh. 
Well, you see, officer, until this very moment, she really didn't know. Suspense. Presented by Autolite. Tonight's stars, Kathy and Elliot Lewis. Well, Harlow, I hope you and your Autolite Stay Full Battery have a wonderful vacation together. Thanks, Hap, and the same to you. See you August 31st, when Suspense will return to the CBS Airways, same time, same stations. Until then, we'll say so long for Autolite, makers of more than 400 products for cars, trucks, planes, and boats in more than 28 plants coast to coast. Now, if you're planning a vacation motor trip, be sure to have your car carefully checked at your neighborhood service station, car dealer, garage, or repair shop. And if your Autolite-equipped car needs replacement parts, ask for and insist on Autolite original factory parts. Because they're engineered to fit together perfectly, work together perfectly, because they're a perfect team. Best wishes for a happy, carefree summer. And remember, friends, you're always right with Autolite. Remember, Thursday, August 31st, Suspense returns to the air with the first of a series of stories that is, as we say... A tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense! Tonight's Suspense play was produced and edited by William Spear, directed by Norman MacDonald. Music for Suspense was composed by Lucian Morawieck and conducted by Lynn Murray tonight. Love, Honor, or Murder is an original play written for radio by Larry Marcus. Kathy and Elliot Lewis can be heard in their new Columbia record albums, Happy Anniversary and Happy Holiday. Don't forget, Suspense returns to the air Thursday, August 31st. You can buy Autolite Stayful batteries, Autolite standard or resistor spark plugs, Autolite electrical parts at your neighborhood Autolite dealers. Switch to Autolite... Good night. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.